Welcome to the Collins Cannon and welcome to my home and to our kitchen. Today we're going to make layered flaky biscuits. For years and years I have been a fan of those canned biscuits that you get in the store that you bake and you take them apart and they're layer after layer and I have always enjoyed those biscuits and usually the biscuits that people cook in their homes don't have that effect. Well today we're going to make biscuits that have those layers and um, if that's the case, you won't have to buy those at the store anymore because what you're going to make at home will be better than anything that you can get in a can. We hope you enjoy. Okay, this recipe is layered flaky biscuits. We have all the ingredients here on the counter. I'm going to tell you what those are in the amounts. Keep in mind that this is a recipe that calls for whole milk and for real butter. Um, I know a lot of people have those at home. And this recipe that I'm going to bake for you now will make around six, no, around eight biscuits. So this is about eight biscuits, eight nice sized biscuits. If you wanted to make them a little larger, you could do six, but this is eight regular biscuits. Um, so let's talk about the ingredients here. First of all, you have two cups of flour. You have three teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, six, te six tablespoons, excuse me, six tablespoons of butter, and this is cold salted butter. Make sure it's cold because of what we're going to have to do here. And a cup or a little under a cup, but a cup of whole milk. The whole secret to this recipe is that once you get the butter in and once you get the liquid in, the milk, you have to be very gentle with it. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Once that milk comes in, it's going to be a very gentle process the way we handle it because if you're too tough on the dough, the biscuits themselves are going to be tough. So let's go ahead and just put these ingredients together. I have a sifter here, just a regular sifter. We're going to go ahead and put in the two cups of flour. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get those in there. Two cups of flour and the three teaspoons of baking powder. So we have that. The two teaspoons of sugar and the half a teaspoon of regular table salt. So I'm going to put that to the side there and go ahead and stir this a little bit in this little sifter thing here. And we are going to sift. We're going to go ahead and sift the, the dry ingredients. It's a little powdery, I know, a little airborne. So we're just making sure that we get those sifted here in the big bowl. So that there are no there are no little crumbs or anything in there. Very good. So here we have the dry ingredients. Like I said, it is a little bit um, a little bit messy at times because of the because of the powder here. So we're going to mix these together. So you have all of your dry ingredients here in the bowl together. Okay. Make sure that's really 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 stirred, and then we are going to put in, please make sure it's as cold as you can get it, we're going to put in these pats of real butter. So this is about six tablespoons. Please make sure that you have them cut up because by, cut, by doing that you'll be able to, to manage it a little bit better. There's absolutely no way to do this um, without it being a little messy. So the very best thing you can do is to go in here with your hands and we're going to take, and it's a little fun I guess, we're going to take this butter and we're going to push the flour and the butter in together so that that butter is totally integrated into those dry ingredients. So as much as you can, just keep pushing, keep pushing, make sure that butter is, I guess, a good phrase or a good term we could use would be squished. Make sure that butter is squished and it's really pushed into those dry ingredients. 
so that every single part, and I know I'm stretching out my words here because it takes a little while to do this, every single part of these dry ingredients have butter attached to it, touching, incorporated into it in some way, and just feel around, and I know it gets, like I said, it gets a little messy here, feel around to make sure that there are no extremely large pieces of butter. Now, if there are a few little chunks of butter, really, for some of us, that's a good thing because in the middle of that biscuit, you're going to have a really nice little piece of buttery goodness right in the middle of a biscuit as you're going. So here we have these. Now, I'm going to leave the camera going. Excuse me for a second. I'm going to wash my hands just a wee bit here. And always, always, always keep in mind that you need to make sure your hands are very clean when you're cooking anything. So, throwing that away. So, we have our we have our dry mixture with the butter in there. So, we have been manhandling, I guess, or human handling this dry ingredient mixture with the butter. But as of right now, we're going to be a little more gentle. We're going to put in probably about a third of the milk. That's whole milk. It's going to be a little less or maybe around a whole cup when we finish. So what we're going to do is very gently, starting from that well of liquid, that milk in the middle, we're going to go ahead and get this starting to mix a little bit. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea, and again I'm getting my hands dirty again, I know, it wouldn't be a bad idea probably to use possibly even a smaller instrument in here. So let me just try this for a moment. I'll put this down and we will use a smaller one here. Maybe even the other end of this one here. I'm going to pour a little bit more milk into this mixture here and just pull some of the dry ingredients down. Not, not going crazy not beating it like it's a cake batter or some other, uh, some other mixture. We are really just incorporating that milk gently into these ingredients. And these are not just dry ingredients, keep in mind. These ingredients definitely are completely blessed with squished butter all inside of them. So I'm going to go ahead, since I am already making quite a mess, go ahead and get the milk. And if you notice that last time, I poured it over on the sides so that those rebel dry forces, those rye rebel, dry rebel forces on the side will definitely see that milk as well too. I may be I may be pushing a little bit too much here. So, so we have that. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling that up. Now, if you'll notice this, this is what happens every so often, because so you'll see how this works. If you'll notice this, this may happen to you as well, this is a little bit too wet. I put too much too much milk in here. So the way to remedy that is just to put a little bit of flour. Now here's the deal. You could wait and make sure that the flour that you have on your counter when you roll the, the biscuits out or when you pat the biscuits out, that flour will work its way into there. However, this needs a little more flour. So let me handle that right now. The 
this is some of the something that happens sometimes when you're just doing this all in one continual take. I'm going to put just a wee bit of flour in there just to dry it out just a smidgen. And I will make sure that my hands are not too wet with water. And I'm going to push this flour in here from the top. And I can already tell a difference. So, if you see, you're starting to see bits and pieces really in a way. See how they're just, just really sort of turning into little strange layers as we go along. So, so we have this, if you want to call it this, a dough ball that is already ready to be put on the counter, the cutting board, for us to, to roll out. So let's take care of that. Now you can do this however you want to. I am going to get some wax paper. To put on this little cutting board. And if you notice I've got enough and you, and you can you have your own counter and your own way of doing this, I know. But for what we're going to do here, I've got enough that I can fold it under so that I can throw, at least throw some of this away. And I'm going to get just a little bit of flour because you have to have something to roll these biscuits out on. And some of this flour will incorporate back into the actual, in the actual dough itself too. So we're going to go ahead and and get that ready to go. So, something else what I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take care of right now is, and if you notice I'm washing my hands a lot here, I am going to go ahead and preheat the oven. We're going to go ahead and preheat this oven and we're going to go to bake and we're going to go to 425 degrees. You can use a wide variety of, of objects if you want to. I'm just going to use this glass here. So if you would, go ahead and take this dough. It's a little wet. But go ahead and take this dough and put it on the surface where you were going to, to roll it out. I've got to get some more of this out of here. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and start the process of patting this dough down. It's one of the best things we can do here because we're going to, if you'll remember, layer this. So we're going to pat it down and if you notice what I did is I folded it over. You don't want to work it too much. with a, You don't want to use a rolling pin. You don't want to completely overwork it again and again. You want to as gently as you can. And keep in mind that this stuff gets sticky if you don't have enough flour there. You are going to pat this out every time and then you're going to fold it over halfway again putting as many of this putting as much of this dough back into the process keep in, keep in mind that my hands are extremely clean as much as we can putting it in here the secret the secret to these layers is this folding process. It has to be folded several times. If you do it four or five times, it's not going to have that flakiness. It's not going to have those layers you want to have. But what you do, if you notice there's little pieces of butter that you can see in there, here and there, and if some gets stuck to your hands, just put it back into the batter. It's all the same. It's all the same ingredient. They're all the same ingredients. You just keep pushing this gently back in and in every case make sure that you know you bring that flour back up over and over and I'm telling you that you may literally go through this process 40 or 50 times of folding and refolding and it doesn't matter if you go faster because the more you do this the faster you can go what does matter though is that you do actually press it down 
without going so fast that you toughen the dough. So even if you're going a little faster, you're still being as gentle as you can in the process. So again, we're folding, and as I said, this is a messy, messy process. You can't help it. Cooking is almost never clean. Unless you open up a can and just dump it in a pot. And there's a time and place for that too. Heaven knows some of us really like SpaghettiOs. So, anyway, so if you'll notice this, it is layer after layer. Now, when you start seeing it stick like this, it may be a cue to go pick up a little more flour. It won't hurt anything if the biscuits are a little floury. Primarily because, think about it, that's what biscuits are made of. Again, on the folds, you can go back and watch this video and count again. I have no idea how many times that is. What, 14, 15? Somebody's going to go count now. I know that I'm getting flour all over me probably, but who cares? It's raining outside. It's probably about midnight anyway. So, notice this. We have a layer. You can hear the rain. You might hear it right now over the microphone. Okay, so notice those little layers of butter that are in there. Those are going to be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little tidbits of taste for whoever gets that biscuit. Notice even if I'm pressing pretty steadily and pretty hard, I'm still in the process not going crazy with it. I'm still being fairly gentle. Now I told you I was going to go 40 or 45 times. I'm probably not going to go that much because I don't know if you can tell, but I can really tell from this vantage that there are many layers already in this dough. And the secret is that when you cut through this dough to make your biscuits, you respect the layers. The layers are running horizontally and that's the direction you'll cut the vertical path through those horizontal lines. i tell you what I'll do. I will go one more fold here, which should do it. And then, to cut these, you want this dough to be about half an inch thick or so. It depends on how you want your biscuits. Do you want them tall or do you want them short and agile or are you putting sausage a piece of sausage between them are you using some butter and jelly are you putting bacon in there are you throwing them at the neighbors or whatever it is you're going you're doing with these um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to cut these and I told you there should be a round eight. The size of this glass, there may be a little fewer than that. But I'm thinking, I don't know if you can tell it from your point of view, from the camera, but we're looking at a little over half an inch thick. So we're going to go ahead, that in the middle is a little more, a little thicker. So let's do that. Okay. So we're going to cut these. My hands are dirty. I'm going to wash those again. Okay. You can use a cast iron skillet. You can use a pie plate. You can use a cookie sheet. You can use almost anything you want to use. I'm going to be using a, a very old casserole dish that belonged to my grandmother and we're going to use now if you want to put butter on it in the in the bottom of the dish you can if you want to put shortening of some kind I'm going to cheat I guess we're going to use this vegetable vegetable spray so I'm going to spray a little bit in here that's just to keep the biscuits from sticking to the 
make sure you get up on the edges too. That just keeps the biscuits from sticking to the pan, sticking to the um, container when you try to get them out. So, here we go. I'm gonna put this over to the side. So, here we have this. Like I said, it is a little bit of a messy process. Nobody said that cooking was super clean, but we are gonna be cleaning as soon as these get into the oven. So, in case you didn't hear, that oven is working its way toward 425 degrees. And so that's what we're working toward is 425 degrees. And you'll bake those at around 10 minutes or so or until they're golden brown. I like mine probably a little more well done than most people, so I may leave it in there 12 minutes. Um, I'm a person who likes doughs and breads to be a little more done. I'm not a fan of raw bread that much. I even like pizzas to be a little overdone. So I'm going to go ahead and cut through these. I'm just going to use a glass to do this. I want to get as close to the edge as I can because I want to make sure I don't over work this dough because whatever's left over I'm going to refold. So here's the first one. I'm going to place it in here just like that in there. I have, I have always heard, if you notice this, I'm going right up to the edge. I don't want to only put three in this entire piece that I've that I've worked out so that I will have to go through it seven or eight more times. I want to do it as few times as possible. I'll put these in here. Please keep in mind that and I've heard this for years, it has to do with, I guess, the physics of baking. You want to make sure that those biscuits touch a little bit. Don't, don't set them way off to the side. Make sure that they touch. They help each other rise more when they touch. And you can look up the, the background for that. But um, So make sure that they do at least touch just a little bit when you put them in there. Okay? If, we, if you would here, notice what I'm doing. I'm getting as close to the other cut as I possibly can. Okay? So I'm pulling this one out. And again, I'm letting that one touch. See if you notice that, that's closer to the middle. That's a little thicker. I probably should have pressed that down a little bit more. I'll go ahead and do that while I'm noticing that. That biscuit's going to be a little taller than the other ones. Okay, so I'll do this right here, hopefully. I probably shouldn't have done that because this is going to be a strange-sided biscuit here. But it will survive. Notice that they're just touching there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they are just barely touching. Okay, so I'm going to push this down. That's still a little thick in the middle, which really works out for the best because I think I can get a biscuit right in the center. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. That edge is a little off. You know what? Nobody will know. I'll just... Yeah, they will. They'll know, but I don't care. That'll be our special biscuit. That's our Frankenstein biscuit. Okay, so there's that. Okay, there is enough room here to do a couple more, I believe, if I'm not terribly mistaken. We may get more than eight out of this. I may have miscalculated. So, okay, so there is yet another one, and I'm touching that. There is six. Look at this. Look at this. This is pretty decent. Number seven. Not bad. Not bad. Look at that. That works out. Look at that. Look how that just perfectly fit up in there because of that little lip. Okay? And when you have this left over, we are going to try our best to keep this in its original form. I tried to pull it back up on that, that same direction of layering. I did my best. I know it wasn't perfect. If you notice, there's some overlapping layers there, but I'm not going to I'm not going to fold and refold and refold because there are layers in that process. And if I can possibly get two biscuits out of this, so you're going to watch me fail miserably here probably. Let's see. If I can possibly get two biscuits without making it two, no. I don't think that's possible here. It's just going to be one. Okay. So there is the eighth biscuit. Wouldn't it be nice to need more flour on the bottom? There's the eighth biscuit. And for this biscuit, this is going to be, I thought the other one was the Frankenstein monster. But I'll tell you what, we will, this, I'm playing this by ear, guys. We will twist this up 
and make our own biscuit version of a twisted breadstick. That looks horrible, doesn't it? But we're going to set it right there. That will be our special baker's biscuit. And we will have fun with that. So, here we go. There are eight biscuits plus one little extra. There goes the oven. It's ready to go. That's the sound that everything is good to go. We're going to take our biscuits and we're going to put them in a 425 degree oven. Right there. And we are going to set the timer. Just to be safe, we're going to set the timer. I'm going to set it for around 10 and a half minutes. I might let it go a minute or two long. Okay, we will now wait for the biscuits to be done and see what they look like. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, here we go. These just came out of the oven. I do have to tell you that there is a modification. These biscuits were not ready in 10 minutes. Um, you probably, some of you probably knew that wouldn't be the case. I was hoping because this oven has a tendency to cook a little faster than others. But these biscuits took around 20 to 22 minutes to cook. So here they are. They are flaky layered biscuits and they smell fantastic. Um, I want to show you what they look like. They're really hot. Like I said, they just came out of the oven. If you'll notice, there's that strange twisty one. So what I will do right now is that for the sake of aesthetics, I will remove that so it doesn't look really weird. So let's get rid of that. Okay, there we go. We have eight biscuits. They are flaky. They smell fantastic. As you know, there, were, there's a, there was a little bit in the dough left over that we made into another biscuit, but it's out of the picture now. Um, if you look at these right here, I know these are super hot. You can tell, I don't want to burn myself and I can already feel the heat. You can already tell that these are layered. You can see the layers piece by piece in there breaking apart in sections. And that makes me very, very, very happy that you can see the different layers there. Okay, here's what's going to happen. I am going to turn this camera off and we are going to plate these up with a little bit of what makes biscuits even better. So if you'll just give me a minute. These are layered flaky biscuits and um, Give them a shot and let us know what you what you think. Please keep in mind that you can get in touch with us various ways. That follows next. Hope to see you on the next episode. Let me add to this. These biscuits right here are delicious. Try it. Cheers.